Well, I guess to, to kind of start things off, let's start with Go With Me first. Mm -hmm. And um, you've adapted novels so well. What was it about Castle's story that caught your attention that just was like, I need to take this? Uh, that's a long story because it actually came to me through uh, Anthony Hopkins, mm. who was engaged in this project for a, for a long time. Uh, before I came into the picture, and you as well, and uh, but we uh, we had made a film before that, and yeah. we uh, came along quite well, and we <clears throat> and we exchanged some emails and stuff, and he sort of, well, couldn't you read this script and see if it could be something for you? And I, when I read it, I read the script, not not the novel to begin with, mm. script first, and uh, then I asked to for the novel, so I read the novel as well, and I could see what he, I believe, what he saw, uh, the character he wanted, wanted to do, and I felt this was uh, an exciting project and something that could be done. Uh, so it's all, <laughs> it's all <laughs> due to, to Tony, actually. Yeah, yeah. Was did Tony bring you kidnapping from Mr. Heineken, or was that something you'd always kind of had? No, it didn't come from me. It, it came from 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 a, an American producer. Mm. Uh, I got that script, and uh, I knew about that story. I heard about it since I'm European. Mm -hmm. I heard about it, and uh, uh, so that's how we we met mm. uh, through that production. Yeah, I've got a question about because I. I love the look of your films, yep. and you, you've you switched cinematographers. You've got yep. uh, Peter Rasmus, yeah, yeah. you've got Frederick yep. on this new one. Yep. What What is it about them that you like, but also how do they still capture the Alfredson style? I mean, it's it's kind of uh, you. Know. I think it's something to do with Scandinavian cinematography, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Uh, they are, uh, Peter is uh, he's Polish, but he's, he's a professional work has been done in Scandinavia mm -hmm. and we have done a lot of films together uh, but on on the other hand I feel that you need to change uh, partners sometimes to 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 freshen up or to, to yeah spread your wings a bit and do some new things and so Rasmus this was the first time we worked together but uh, it felt uh, I had very good references from people in, in Denmark that I know that said Told me that Rasmus would would be perfect for for me or for telling a story like this. Definitely so, fits. Yeah, like it, it fits, fits your style. Yeah. It fits my style and uh, also the way I like to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so uh, that was actually the only thing that I really wanted to have mm -hmm. uh, a cinematographer that I felt comfortable with. How do you work? Like, are you a fast worker? Because your films feel like you are. Uh, Maybe I'm I'm fast. I, I don't know. You you have independent to, friendly. Independent <laughs> friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I am independent friendly. I, I don't know. Uh, but I come from a from 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 a place where we don't have that much money. Mm -hmm. We have to bring uh, uh, as much money in front of the camera instead of behind it. So we're pretty. The Swedes and Danes and even the Norwegians are pretty good at. Doing things in a in a in a, in a way that it seems to be more expensive than it actually is. But, but you're also, I mean, he's very very prepared. You know, you're very. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, when you you know like, your vision and you're prepared, you know, every day that there's no time waste. You show up, everybody knows exactly what you're doing, and it's not like picking up extra shots and doing multiple takes just because. You know, no. that's one big thing I noticed working with Daniel. Do you do you mind if I ask because you have such a great, you find some incredible locations. You found some incredible places in all the movies. Like, what, and now you're in Serbia, of all yeah. of Like, how do you search for these places, and how do you find some of these places? Because there's some shots in some of your movies, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Well, that's actually a, a great question. This, this film, when I first read it, it was a small Oregon logging town. And I actually grew up in British Columbia. And I grew up in this world and, and, and uh, a community just like it's in the book and in the script. And so, you know, from a producer standpoint, I immediately took interest because it's like, well, I know where we should probably shoot this if we're going to do it. 
whether that made financial sense and, and you know tax incentives and all that stuff is another question but um, yeah it was central British Columbia so we actually shot almost where I grew up I mean crazy. where I grew up actually wow, that's strange very strange <laughs> if you if you're born and raised in New York you're you know it's not a not a big deal to shoot a film in New York but um, yeah we shot in uh, a town I'm from in central British Columbia what did you feel about that location did it remind you of home at all uh, in a way it, it did uh, it's not like where I'm I'm born in Stockholm. Stockholm mm -hmm. is a is a city, and uh, it's nothing like it. But the north of Sweden is is Schillefors. It's Schillefors. Yeah, yeah, it's qu it's quite close yeah. to to this, and I think the same. Uh, well, let's say the problems of this story, it's also possible in Sweden. I would say uh, mm. the, there's parts of Sweden in the north that people are moving out, not moving back, and. Uh, towns are getting smaller and people are getting older and, uh, and with people that are left just behind and uh, outside the everything that's happening around and uh, that's how it is in Sweden as well I would say now that you've you've successfully made the transition to the the English film to the yeah. American film are you a little bit Maybe upset that they didn't go, Fincher, you take a break. Let me do this the uh, way I did it. Uh, no, not at all, really. I, I think we did those Millennium films in another in another time, in a way. Because we, we over the years, we've done a lot of films in, 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 in Sweden with collaborations with the, uh, the other Scandinavian countries and, and Germany, mostly, I would mm. say. And uh, from the beginning, the Millennium series was financed as a TV series uh, with German money and Swedish and Norwegian and Danish. So, so the, the success of that film uh, or those films was uh, not expected at all mm. because the novels were translated first into French, I believe, and became huge in, in France but at that point we were all already shooting we didn't mm -hmm. know that at that point so it was actually a never happen again I think. <laughs> <laughs> it will never happen again no wow mm. you know Rick this kind of popped in since you you found that area you found that specific spot as a producer though once you find it and like you said you get to the the money side of it and the actual okay we actually have to do this how does that all work? How does people like, I guess, Daniel influence? How does, how does that, how do you make this happen? Uh, you know, with a film like this, you know, I think, I think the, the town really needed to be a character. I mean, it is a character. And, and I think you needed to see it as a whole. So when you're scouting a film and when, you know, Daniel flew from Sweden, I flew from Los Angeles to British Columbia, you know, we're both, even though I was from there, you're both kind of seeing it now from a story perspective. Like, okay, well, you know, does this community work? Or if you piece together different cities, you know, to fill your, you know, the story, the, the city that's actually in your story. Um, I think 70% of the film was shot almost in one town. So it, it is important with a film like this to kind of build that character. Like the, you know, I think we accomplished that. You know, it really does feel like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of curious. How quickly was Julia put into the picture? Like, was she someone you always thought of, or was she kind of more last minute and just she fit? You know, the whole film was very quick turnaround. From the time, like, I read the script, I think, call it July 30th, and we were scouting four weeks later or six weeks later. Wow. And we were in production eight or nine weeks later. Like, it, it was the fastest turnaround especially yeah. coming off a film that took us 12 years to make yeah. the year prior to a film that was, uh, you know, what are we, 12 months now from the time, you know, pretty wow. much read the script. So, I didn't realize that. So the whole casting process all happened very quickly, and, and Julia was obviously top of our list um, and, uh, you know, started with Tony Hopkins, and then it all kind of, the whole thing happened so quick. I have a question about, since we're here at Austin Film Festival, um, being able to show it at, at this venue, this type of environment, you've talked about how, you know, this is the Writers' Festival. Story is obviously important to you, and story is obviously important to you. What is it like showcasing it here? 
or about to showcase it here. I think you know that better because this is the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a jacket though. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, look, Dan Petrie, uh, who's our you know producer on the film as well, and my business partner in Enderby. I mean, we've been involved with Austin for him, I think, for 18 years, and this is my 12th year, I think, in a row. So, it it uh, it feels great to come here, and and you know, you can call it home court advantage or or whatnot, but it's. Um, we're obviously very happy with the film and very proud of this film. So for me personally, it, it's great to bring Daniel here from Sweden and to show him what Austin's all about. And, and uh, you know, this film, it premiered at the Venice Film Festival mm -hmm. and it's a completely different audience, obviously. And this is a gritty, you know, small town American film that's, this storyline is happening all across North America, you know, and in other parts of the world. So, you know, it's, it's feels great to actually show it to Austin and it's going to feel great tomorrow night, actually. You know, you've treated so many directors and, and filmmakers to the wonderment of Austin. Where are you taking Daniel? Um, that's a, we don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> Six Street's probably a good stop. But, it's Halloween. Uh, that's going to be yeah, crazy. Yeah, that, it is actually strange to have a screening on Halloween night. But uh, yeah, I'm going to dress up as Tony, actually, for the, for the screening. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious kind of about film festivals outside of this because yeah. you've God, you've been everywhere. I mean, it, obviously Venice and, and some of the bigger ones, but like Hawaii, you've popped into. No, I've never been to Hawaii. I know the I'm, films have made it there. I, ma right. I made a film many years ago that called Tic Tac. That was mm. a small film, but it went around all over the over the globe actually mm. to so many festivals. But at that point, I didn't have the possibility to go mm. to those festivals, and I was so surprised that it. Uh, actually made it <laughs> all over the place but um, but uh, it's fun that a film in a very small language like Swedish can travel and be seen uh, and I know especially that little film uh, was a huge success in South Korea which wow. you you wonder how yeah. come <laughs> you don't know why yeah. but suddenly it sort of Resonated, I guess. Yeah, yeah but you don't know that to begin yeah. with. As we you didn't, didn't make it for that audience. No, not at all. Not at all. Of course not. We huh. didn't know that. But that's also, I would, would say, the case with the Millennium films. We didn't actually believe that it would travel uh, as it did. But, uh, but it did, and that's fantastic. This is a question to both of you guys. Yeah. When you're looking for what's next, what are you reading? What are you looking for? And obviously for you and Daniel, what are you guys looking for when you put your name behind a project? Two different answers. <laughs> well, uh, probably two different. Uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a story guy. So if a story grabs me, uh, I'm actually, I will go, go there wherever it takes me to do it, if it's possible to do it. Uh, but it's all all comes down to the script and to what the story is. Uh, if I if I could choose, it could be I don't know what, but, but I need a, I need a good script and I need a good story. That's the whole thing for me. I'll go one step further. I mean, it, it is uh, obviously about the story and the script, but it, it also it also is about the financing and the distribution and. You know, I always talk about the makeability factor and, and how much, you know, makeability does your script have. And that is, you know, are the characters rich and, and, you know, have depth that these actors that you need to cast to get the financing and ultimately get distribution, are they going to want to play those roles? Mm -hmm. um, it's the, the Idaho dairy farming uh, kind of analogy that I use. And that is, uh, you know, not analogy, but if you give us the Idaho dairy farming uh, script, it's going to be tough to make that into a film that's going to actually get distribution and see, you know, an international audience. And so, you know, you have to have commercial projects, you know, like Go With Me is gritty, dark, but it has commercial upside and it has a cast that yeah. gets involved and now gets you distribution. And it's kind of the responsible way to produce films is how we look at it, you know. That's how it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't do a film that's not going to play in the foreign markets, you know, you, because that's where your risk mitigation comes from. Um, so you have to, you know, have these characters be rich and, you know, where they're going to want to play the parts. It's a very similar question, this one, but 
not based on trying to make a film. What do you like watching? Whether it's TV, film, what attracts you? And same to, to Daniel. Uh, what do I like to watch? Yeah, um, what are your favorite TV shows or movies that have come out recently? Just, well, you like that. Um, I'm a big History Channel kind of guy. I like right. stuff, not the Pawn Stars History Channel, but <laughs> you know, you like stuff that's historical, and I think that bleeds into what I want to make as a producer, and that is stuff that is very, very, you know, deep, and, and whether it be psychological conspiracy type stuff that's, you know, based on fact and, you know, stuff that's, you know, a little more, you know, not expendables, you know, you want to make stuff that's like the constant gardener. We use like the stuff that's mm. very, you know, gritty and, you know, layers of truth in there as well. Very cool. Daniel, what do you, what do you like? The thing is, uh, you often get that question as a director and uh, I usually go back to my first, uh, uh, my first big cinema experience and it, uh, it's actually two. It was, uh, the seventh sale by Ingmar wow. Bergman. Yeah, I was. I think I saw it on TV when I was around thirteen or something, and I was totally captured by this black and white, at that point, actually old Swedish film. But uh, I think that story was uh, heavy. And uh, a couple of weeks later, my my father took me to <laughs> to Thunderbolt with James Bond, and that was also sort of a wow you can, you can this is also a story yeah. and uh, I tend to like things that are in between those <laughs> <laughs> it's a big yeah. wide range yeah. like wide it. range but th that's how I feel about it I, I'm, I'm not very uh, I can see many uh, I try to see many films on I think as a Swede I, I get the opportunity to see more films from other parts of the world mm -hmm. than you usually do here uh, in America and we used to the uh, subtitles and we can see films in French and Spanish or whatever it doesn't really matter yes. and uh, that's uh, a good thing I believe to have that possibility to see stories from all over the world well guys I really appreciate the time and um, I'm excited you guys are here I mean mm -hmm. Rick obviously mm -hmm. you guys come back all mm -hmm. the time but uh, thank you guys so much for the chat.